Cliff, there was an article on the BBC website yesterday saying that the German publisher of Marx's Das Kapital has sold this year to date ten times more uh, copies than they did last year. I thought Marx was a dead theorist <laughs> and totally discredited. You know, tell me, why are people interested? I think they're interested, Mark, because he has a particular take on capitalism. Uh, people get confused about what Marx was about. They think he wrote about communism. Was that only a tiny amount of what he wrote was about a future communist society? 95% or more of what he wrote was about capitalism. So it's his analysis of capitalism that people are interested in because of the, the problems that we're facing at the moment. And that's why it's, it's pertinent. And if you like, I can take you through his, his theory of crisis, which is the kind of central bit um, that's pertinent to what we're Yeah, that'd be fantastic now. if you could, yeah. Well, if you stand over there, and I'll, I'll tell you all about it, right? It starts um, with the labour theory of value, okay, which uh, was not something that Marx invented. This is from Ricardo and Smith, classical economists of the 18th and 19th century. But basically, the labour theory of value says that only people make and create value, right? Machines or flip charts have value. They have use value, okay? They are useful things. But the flip chart on its own can't do anything, okay? It can't create more value than it has. The only thing that can create more value out of the flip chart is if somebody does something with it, somebody does something with it. So that's the basic idea of the labour theory of value. Now, what I'm going to take you through is a very rapid distillation of a pile of books this high, okay? So uh, um, the, the pure Marxist scholars that might happen upon this will probably be appalled at the way I'm simplifying things, but in order to get the essence of the arguments over, I'll, I'll do the best I can. If we assume this is the working day, okay, it can be divided up into two component parts. All right? Now this is the average working day, so if you look at it across the global economy, that'll be times, I don't know, three billion or however many people are working. Okay. Now this part here we call the variable capital. This is the, if we start at 9 o'clock, by about 2 o'clock, okay, I have created enough value to pay for my wages, okay? All the time that I then work for the rest of the afternoon is creating what Marx calls surplus value, right? Now, surplus value is the source of profit, okay? And clearly, if this, this line can move, depending on various changes in the economy, which I'll briefly explain in a moment, now, the ratio of these two, S over V, Marx calls the rate of surplus value. And we'll see how this is crucial in a moment. OK, that's the first thing. Now, the rate of profit, which is the crucial measure here, is surplus value over variable capital, which is the amount that's funding the wages here. OK, and this thing here called C, which Marx calls constant capital. Now, this is machinery, it's bought-in material, okay, it's, it's, it's leather, it's whatever it is we're working with, okay, paper, all right? The reason he calls it constant capital is its value does not change, okay? It is what it is, which comes back to this basic idea of the, the labour theory of value. Now, his theory of crisis uh, is based on what he calls the law of the tendency of the rate of profit to fall over a business cycle. Right? Now, why it falls is actually the, the nub of the argument. Okay. He says, due to competition in markets, the, the capitalist, the owner of the business, can't fritter away all this surplus value in luxury expenditure. Right? A significant proportion of this has to be reinvested to protect himself from competition and to gain a, a march on com competitors. Now, because of technical improvements in the way we make things, okay, the productivity of labour has improved dramatically over the years through the introduction of machinery. Now machinery is this bit here, all right, the constant capital. Now over time, as the businessman invests, the ratio of constant to variable capital increases. There's more machinery working with the individual labourer, okay. And then you can see this manifested in process industries, for example, where you just see a mass of pipe work and about two blokes with a hard hat in the corner. I mean, that would be an extreme case. But the general tendency is still there to, to replace living labour, which is the V-bit, with what he calls dead labour, which is the constant capital. 
So over time, through this process of accumulation, which is not an option for a capitalist, he has to do this, okay, this ratio, C over V, which he calls the organic composition of capital, not a particularly helpful term, but that ratio increases over time. Now here's the trick. If we now divide through this equation here by V, okay, we then get S over V divided by C over V plus 1. Okay, now, if this increases, as we've just explained, over a, a business cycle, and this ratio, the ratio of, of surplus value, or the rate of surplus value, if that increases at a lower speed than this, then overall this equation, which is the rate of profit, okay, that goes down. Right. Now, he calls it the tendency of the rate of profit to fall. There are counteracting influences which can delay the onset of this effect. One of them is if you have improvements in productivity in wage goods producing industries, the amount of value that's, that's needed to pay wages, if you like, or to feed the workers, etc., etc., can reduce. So that line can go that way. So surplus value can increase. You can increase this by speeding up production lines. So the individual hour of the worker's time produces more stuff. You can, in fact, extend the working day, as France has done recently. They tried to reduce it. They've had to extend it because they're, they're not competitive with the, with the reduced working day. And foreign trade and globalization, as other things that Marx suggested, can reduce the tendency of this to fall. But, and what's happened in, in the current situation, in my view, is that we've delayed the onset of this because these are all value terms based on labor time. These are not money terms, okay? And if you've expanded credit, which they have done over the past eight, ten years, then you can delay the monetary expression of the falling rate of profit. But the underlying, and this is Marx's method, okay, the underlying structure of the economy is reflected here, not in the money appearance of the economy. And eventually, um, you know, it all falls down, and that's the situation that we're in because people realise that the rate of profit has fallen. Okay, has fallen, has fallen, right. How do we get out of the problem, which is the final bit, guys, so is this. The crisis causes businesses to go, go bust, okay? There's also consolidations within industries where firms combine together. Sometimes in some process industries there's mothballing of plants, right? Now what that does is it takes C out of the system. Constant capital is then taken out of the system. So this reduces. As businesses go bust, the reserve army of unemployed, as Marx called it, increases that places downward pressure on wages, okay? Because people are competing for jobs, they'll take a job at a lower pay, etc. And what that does is it reduces V, okay? So if we've, if we've reduced that and we've reduced that, then overall that equation gets restored, the rate of profit recovers, and then we're back on another cycle of accumulation, um, which might last 10 years, 15 years, who knows? You can't predict with any degree of certainty here but that's the basic theory okay and that's maybe why people are looking to buy Das Kapital okay Cliff thanks very much indeed that's been a, um, a very quick run through uh, of some of uh, Marx's key ideas but uh, that will give me lots to think about um, over the, the rest of this week uh, and beyond so thanks very much indeed okay Mark you're welcome <laughs>